It's not every day that I get to do a game review. Had to wear the Resident Evil Biohazard shirt. So what's happening everybody, uh, Pragmatic Addict here. Today we are going to be looking at a video game. It's been a long time since I've reviewed a game. I think the last one I did was Cuphead DLC. <laughs> uh, but this is the next game in the Dark Pictures Anthology series. And for those that, you know, aren't uh, familiar with the Dark Anthology uh, Pictures games, it is a series of choose-your-own-adventure horror games where essentially with each game, the plot is to, or the point, is to see how many people you can, you know, keep alive throughout the night. Now, I've always really liked this idea of, like, you know, the choose-your-own-adventure style, and it, it, and it has become, you know, very popular. Uh, in, you know, the case of these games specifically, the Dark Pictures uh, Anthology, it is actually an annual thing where every year they will, like, release a new uh, title, and I think they got, like, the next seven or some shit planned. <laughs> Which, just side note real quick, after completing this game, stay till the end of the credits. Credits. They actually release a teaser for the next game. Holy shit, we're going to fucking space! But yes, uh, these have been like a annual kind of like release for this uh, series. It is from uh, some massive games which started with Until Dawn, which was a huge success. And uh, even like this year, they also dropped another game called The Quarry, which again, Until Dawn and The Quarry are separate titles, you know, from the Dark Pictures games. But it's the same kind of, you know, idea. It's horror, make your own decisions, choose your own adventure style game. But here's the thing with, like, these, uh, these games. I, while I do really like the style and obviously, you know, choose your own adventure horror interactive game, that sounds fun as hell. Even with these games, you know, they, uh, they tend to have, you know, some big name actors even come in and, you know, help out with that. They've gotten, you know, Rami Malek and Until Dawn. They've gotten Will Poulter and, uh, Little Hope. The Quarry had fucking Ted Raimi, David Arquette, Ethan Supley, fucking Lynn Shay, Brenda Song. So that's another thing I want to point out. Uh, this one actually has Jesse Buckley, which is huge. You know, we saw her recently in the film Men. But here's the thing with these is that <laughs> whenever I've played these games, I've always been really excited for them because of the idea again. But whenever I play them, I always have the same mentality where it's like, if these were actual horror movies, they would have all released in January. They just would have. They they would all be January releases. But here's the thing. With so with each of these games, they're all inspired by uh, you know a variety of different horror films. And the sources for this one in particular were saying that it was actually going to be inspired by the likings of like The Shining and Saw. So you know with that right there, I'm just like sold. Not even fucking sixty nine ninety nine retail price. We're talking thirty nine ninety nine on the PS five. Sold. And I completely agree. Uh, this game in particular, so one thing I want to say uh, is that I have never really been scared by these games. There are jump scare after jump scare in every single game, including this one, but this one, what I really liked about it is that there was actually more exploration and actual puzzle solving and genuine gameplay than just, you know, making decisions for, like, characters and seeing if they'll fucking get their heads cut off or end up making out with each other. And with this one, with, with it being inspired by films like Saw and The Shining, you definitely see it. So basically, this game opens up in the 1890s, showing us this hotel run by the man of the name of H.H. H. Holmes, who kills all of his guests. Pretty solid stuff. And basically, he ends up getting sentenced to death for numerous murders and is labeled the first serial killer in America. Soon after, we are fast-forwarded to modern day where we see a film crew with a director named Charlie and a few younger people. One in particular, again, played by Jesse Buckley. And this guy, Charlie, this director, he hasn't really caught his big break yet, so they say. And this crew is invited to this remote island to an exact replica of the H.H. H. Holmes Hotel to shoot a show, and once they arrive there, shit goes bonkers. You know, people are getting killed off, uh, the hotel is actually, like, rigged and booby-trapped, and, uh, you know, there's, like, trap doors, uh, when they walk, like, you know, through the halls of the hotel, like, the hotel, like, its halls are, like, shifting and changing and shit, so that's, uh, kind of, like, where the inspiration of, like, The Shining comes in, which I really enjoyed, because, like, you know, you'll be walking down this hotel, and, uh, one thing with this game is that they add a lot of new gameplay features that are completely new for the Dark Pictures series. You know, you'll have to, like, go around and, like, collect and, like, equip stuff in order to, like, you know, use, to, like, make, you know, story progression. You'll have to use, like, you know, 
mics. Like there's this one, uh, there's this one part of this game that I really enjoyed, and it's actually a pretty big, big sequence. It comes in and out where you're like, you know, wandering the the halls of the hotel, and like the power will cut out, and you'll have to use this mic to like listen in between like all the doors and all the walls. You'll have to follow, like, children laughing and, like, sounds of, like, women crying. It's very creepy shit. And when you're, like, you know, circling the halls, you'll go back. You'll be like, oh, sorry, dead end. Go back. And, like, there's a wall there that wasn't there before, and you'll have to take a new route. Very cool stuff. And also, uh, going back to, like, the inspirations of Saw, <laughs> there's times where you'll, you'll, like, you know, uh, like, going through, like, a hall or, like, a door, and it'll lead to, like, this bathroom that's filled with, like, blood and, like, broken urinals and fucking, like, people, like, attached to fucking chains. It, it's saw. It's very saw. And there's, like, times where you actually have to solve these puzzles and make decisions for which ones you want to keep alive. And I just gotta say it. It is so nice to actually see a Dark Pictures game not be centered around the fucking war. Like, this one has everything fans are gonna love of, of horror. It's inspired by, you know, again, films like Psycho, The Shining, Saw. It takes place in a haunted hotel. It's got serial killer-esque stuff. It's got, you know, traps and booby traps. This hotel that you're trying to get out of, it's rigged. So you gotta watch where you're going and try not to fall into a trap. There's fucking mannequins that stalk you. And I just think that this is gonna be the first Dark Pictures game where people really take seriously. I thought Little Hope with the uh, addition of like Will Poulter from like Midsommar and shit, I thought that was really cool because uh, with, you know, Little Hope, this like group of uh, like college kids, they like end up in the, like they're, they're driving in the middle of the night, their bus breaks down, they end up in this town that they've never heard of and this town they like once they arrive in it they can't get out it's kind of like some vivarium bullshit <laughs> i thought that was a cool idea because man and Medan taking place in like the army before that and they gain house of ashes after that i was just like can you give us an actual horror fucking story and yeah this does it man so again <laughs> going back to how i said like i've never really been scared of these games because they all feel like premises for like January release horror films, uh, and they're all just jump scares. This one was very effective. Again, you know, you're, there'll be like times where you're having to like walk through like a quiet like hotel hallway, like the halls of like a hotel. The power is out, and you have to like listen to like you know a, like an old lady crying or like a children children like laughing, and you have to like try to find the source of like you know the noise and what that outcome of that noise actually is. Can be really fucking creepy. Because I was playing this in the middle of the night, and I'm just like, okay, it's not genuinely getting under my skin, but, hey, <laughs> this is fun. This is, it's it's a good throwback to, like, a classic horror story, and you're actually writing that story. And even, like, the prologue, like, where it's, uh, you know, kind of setting up, like, the story of, like, you know, the the, the lore of, like, you know, this this guy, H.H. H. Holmes. Uh, like I was saying, like, uh, there's a lot of new gameplay features. <laughs> so this thing is kind of spoilish, but not really. It's, like, the first, like, minute of the game. But, like, uh... It's set in the 18, you know, 90s, where we actually see the hotel and uh, the guy, H.H. H. Holmes, the murderer, this uh, serial killer of that owns the hotels and kills all the victims. Well, the first people that were introduced to is this couple that are, you know, guests at the hotel. They're staying there, and uh, there's, like, this gift shop, and you play as, like, the wife, and there's, like, a wide variety of, like, things that you can grab. You can only grab one of them. There's, like, 30 different items. And based off the one thing that you choose to grab, it sets up a specific route for the prologue and I thought that was great when I realized that I'm just like oh I'm gonna replay this chapter tons <laughs> I'm gonna start I'm gonna start and erase my profiles just to see all the 30 different routes I thought that was a huge grab right away it's just a step in the right direction for these games you know from the graphics to the characters to the gameplay to even the story I mean you still get plenty of times where like that are this is a famous thing in the dark pictures uh game series it's like very cringe humor and cringe dialogue it is still there at times but it's very low key it is not at all the center of attention like the interactive uh choice making is in this time around this game really does feel like a video game where a lot of it is puzzle exploration and like you know actual gameplay and uh one thing like uh, i was thinking about was like 
the exploration and the puzzles, it kind of was like reminding me a little bit of Resident Evil at times. And you know, with saying that, well, there are a lot of new uh, good features in this game. There is one that I do like the idea of it, but with it being new, I think it still has a lot of shit to work on, which is, uh, so there's this new feature where you can actually hide, where like, if like a serial killer will like come in like a room, you'll have like a few seconds to like scour the room and like choose a spot to hide in, and you have to hold down like the button. And here's the thing is I think that's great, and, uh, cause, uh, what it does is it doesn't let you know when to let go. Uh, you have to hold down the button, and then you gotta, gotta go with your, like, your instinct of, like, okay, I think the dude's gone, and then you can let go, and sometimes they're not gone, and they'll fucking axe you off. I think that that is a great idea, cause it's like, wow, you actually have to, like, you go with your instincts and actually have to, like, listen around and make your genuine own decision. I think that is great, but the game doesn't tell you that. It's just like, oh yeah, hide. You know, hold down L2. And then, like, for the first time, I'm, like, holding it for, like, two minutes. And I'm, like, you haven't given me a, a, the okay to let go. And then I let go, and I'm, like, oh. Uh, that would have been nice to know a minute ago. I, I could have been doing this for the next three minutes. But, yeah, just overall, this was the first genuine, like, game of dark pictures that I actually liked. Again, you know, I, th I thought that The Man in Medan was fine. I think that was just because it was the first installment. And then we got Little Hope, which was, like, much different. I thought that was even better. And then we got House of Ashes, which is another war one after, like, the first installment, which there was only, like, three up to that point. So I was just, like, at that point, like, we'll see what we get next. And now we got this one, and it is a huge step in the right direction. It is not perfect, and I would overall give this a positive review, but I feel more comfortable just saying it's fine. Because, again, it's not perfect, and it still is a Dark Pictures game from Submassive. You still get a lot of the issues like the cringe dialogue and the weird, quirky, like, face movements. Uh, and there's, like, a lot of new features while some of them, like, most of them are really good. A lot of them, it does kind of need to work on it a little bit. But it is a definite huge step in the right direction in pretty much every way. And yeah, overall, I'm going to give this one a positive review. But yes, guys, that is going to do it for my Dark Pictures, The Devil in Me installment review. What a long-ass title. Uh, my next reviews will be tomorrow and the next day of Strange World and Bones and All. I don't know which ones I'm going to get to, but after that, I'll probably be taking the rest of the month off before getting into December because that would be like officially like six or seven reviews in the past week so i'm gonna take you know a week off after working for a week straight but let me know what you guys thought about this review as well as the game i hope that you guys are gonna play it because it is the best one not only so far but it is a genuinely effective good horror game with you know again everything in the right step like a step in the right direction and i cannot wait for the next installments and specifically the next one. We're going to fucking space. But yes, guys, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys are having a great day, and I will see you soon. Thank you guys so much for watching, and take care.